Hi, this is Glendon Cameron with Hustler Consulting. This is how you get your Hustler Consulting requested video done. Go to the link in the video, make your purchase, and during the checkout process, enter your question here. Once you're done, just check out. Your video will be done within two, within 24 to 72 hours. And an added benefit, if your question makes more than $50 through the donation process, you will receive your feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the good side. What's going on, people? Once again, we are leaving the gym. Nice, sweaty workout on this wonderful day. If you like the content of this channel, hit the little I and uh, support Hustlers University YouTube channel. And you're gonna like the content. I have a story to tell you today. It's a good story and it has a happy ending. Yes, it comes with the happy ending. Very happy ending. I was having a conversation with a stranger who's now a friend at a bar or a counter. They serve alcohol, but let's just say it was a counter. Because it was the middle of the day. And then again, people do get liquored up in the middle of the day. We're talking. And I mentioned that I'm a business consultant. It's just easier to tell people that because when you say, well, I have a YouTube channel, it, it gets confusing because their mind can only grasp one concept at a time. And I just and, and then someone's like, hey, what do you do? Do you have a business card? And I said, no. And they was like, well, you need business cards. And I said, no, you don't. You need customers. You don't need business cards. You need customers. And, you know, and they kind of laughed and everything. And it's like, you don't have any business cards? I said, no. And they're like, well, you can go to uh, the place online and get your... I was like, it doesn't matter. It's not the card. It isn't how cheap it is. It isn't how cheap it, you know, expensive it is. Business cards are a key to a lock if the person wants to insert the key to the lock they'll insert it if they don't want to insert it you'll never hear from them so what's more important the key or the lock and essentially you want to give them access to the lock early as possible where they don't even need a key. And we were just talking and they, they kind of laughed at my uh, analogy and it's like, well, you know, whatever. And I said, well, I'll prove it to you. And then this is where it gets interesting. I was like, I am 450 bucks per hour. If I can't make your business better in 30 minutes, you pay me nothing and I'll give you $100. And the guy was like, oh, let's make it sweeter. If you can't help me, just give me the 450. Uh, wait a minute. I said 450 divided by two. I said bet. So I didn't know his business. Didn't know what the hell he was doing. But just by the fact that he said I need your car, he's in trouble. I could smell it. I could, mm, I could smell the trouble. There was blood in the water. So we started talking, and he has an accounting firm. And I had to, had to reframe it. He he had. I told him it's like you have a job. You don't have a firm. You have a job. He has an accounting firm. It's him and his assistant. So he's doing all the work and he has programs and software and all this other stuff doing it. And he's stuck. He's been making the same amount of money for the last, I guess, three or four years and just can't grow the business. Now, understand, many accountants, CPAs are what I call one arm bandits. It's just, it's just that person. That's it. So essentially, if they are not there to do the work, there is no business, therefore they have a job. And we're just sitting there, just talking. And I said, uh, how long have you been in business? And he said, 12 years. How many customers have you lost? He said, quite a few over the years. Some stay, some go, you know, it happens. Do you have records of these customers? And he said, of course. I said, well, I will craft you a letter. And I did it on my iPhone. It was a very short email, sent it to him. I said, go back to your office find everybody that used to do business with them and send them this message and he looked at it and he said you're kidding I said yeah send it to him so he gets back to his office he sends out the message 
before the end of the day, he has $5,000 in new business. And no, I'm not going to tell you what's in the email. You have to pay me for that. But he was blown away. And we talked and we talked. And I was like, this is why you don't need business cards. You need customers, you need transactions, and you need results. You get results, you don't need the business card. You get results, you don't need a resume. If you're known for results, if you are looking to get in and you're good at working inside the system, you may need those things. But if you become result-driven, process-driven, then you will definitely improve your outlook and your opportunities in life. Now, this that wasn't the happy ending that I got some money. That wasn't the happy ending. The happy ending is he went ahead and hired me and said, look, okay, you know, if you can do that at the lunch counter, uh, what can you do if we just sit down and talk about a few things? So, got into his business, found out that, well, there was many things I already knew. Got in there and figured out what his weak prop, his weak spots were, and we got rid of them. Got rid of them. And unfortunately, one of his biggest weak spots was him. He had what I call, no one can do it as good as me syndrome. It's bullshit. There's people who can do it just as good as you or even better. Many entrepreneurs refuse to let that notion go. Therefore, they keep their businesses small. So we worked on that, worked on some other stuff, and the email and the new tweaks to his business, he's going to realize enough money to take his wife and kids on this vacation to Europe earned in one month. And since of the new automation procedures and things that we put in place, he can actually go for two weeks and come back and money is still being made because they gave him some few other tricks. Now, let's talk about why this happens. The guy is smart, graduated from Vanderbilt, smart guy, uh, worked for one of the big 10 before it was the big four or five, whatever it is now. Smart guy. Smart is not enough. You would do better being dumb as a brick with proper business structure than being smart and no proper business structure. And he didn't have proper business structure. He had structure that he was told and led to believe he must have, but he didn't have a really good business structure that fit in with his personal goals and family life. You know, tax season came up and I was like, okay, you know, when does it get crazy for you? And he told me about this. It's like, okay, you need to prepare for that now. So there were some other things that we put in. And understand, I have a little accounting knowledge because the tweaks and things I did had nothing to do with accounting. It had to do with business structure. And when I say business structure, I'm not talking about incorporation, LLC. And no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about structuring your business where it makes money for you versus you making money for it. And that's where he was. He was making money for it. And it was killing it. So definitely the structure of your business is way more important than the business card and some of these other things that people are led to believe they must have. Uh, in my course, 30 days to $2,500, many people started making money the first day because there was structure and there was task and there was a process. And many people don't understand that it's extremely important to have, extremely important to have these things. Because if you don't, you become a indentured servant to your own business. That's what happens. You become an indentured servant to your own business. And that's where he was. I uh, worked with him. Was just really finished working up with him because uh, he's in a really good space now. But his revenues have improved maybe 15 to 20,000 per month and his hours in the office have gone down. More money, more time. That's the American dream. And uh, it's very interesting because we were talking the other day and he's like, you're right, you don't need a business card. You really, you really don't need a business card. Because the thing is, many people have uh, called me out for my esoteric practices being eccentric and quirky but it works and long as it works the beat goes on now when you're setting up your business structure you have to really think about the end goal this is one of the reasons that I continue to say 
develop your life goals first, your business goals second. You can have a very profitable business, be doing very well, and your personal life can be miserable. Now, there is no law that says if your business is great, your personal life must suck. There's something that's uh, part of TV and other lore. Essentially, when you learn the proper business structure based upon your goals, your life's design, the things that you want to do, I'll give you a case, and I bring this up all the time. If you want to have a family and you want to have kids and you want to see your kids, there's just certain things you're not going to be involved in like working second shift or maybe if you work second shift in your home during the day I did that when I was in the medical field you just have to really ask those questions I uh, met someone else she's not a client I have a feeling she will be and she's uh, married and I said you have kids she said no do you want them I was, she's like yeah I said okay start a business now because there is a period of time where you know it's, it's very it takes a lot of energy and stuff to start your business and get it rolling but she starts now and I told her I said you can set this thing up where when you do become pregnant and have your kid, you can be home and your office will run itself or you may go to the office two or three days a week. And she's like, you know, uh, I have a friend and she's kind of talked about that boutique owners. Uh, when I say boutique, not clothing, but boutique relationship firms, uh, accounting firms, things like that. And she's had a friend who does that and she says the amount of free time is insane because it all goes back to business structure. One of the reasons that many businesses are not doing as well as they could is they don't have any structure. It's uh, wake up Monday morning, hit the ground hard, and like, okay, let's see how much money we can make versus planning on making money. There's a big difference. It's a really, really big difference with that. And sometimes people get a little caught up in what they're supposed to do versus doing what is required. And you know, the whole thing with the business card. Hold on a second. I, I have, okay, you know what? I'm about to start driving like an idiot because people get real interested in this time of day. And I have somewhere I need to be. Here we go. I don't know why <laughs> some folks just get, I'm not gonna go too fast when you're behind me, but oh, okay, you're trying to pass me? Let me speed up. Okay, we're back. That was the angry Glenda. I'm back. All right. And essentially, what happens is you are doing what you think you're supposed to do versus doing what you need to do. They're supposed to do, you know, like business cards, getting an office, all these other things. Uh, There's so many businesses that you can start for little or nothing. Uh, I look at the contract office. I'll tell you how I started the uh, contract office furniture business. I spent a uh, hundred bucks on the LLC, and that month I made like a net profit of three thousand dollars. That first month, that that business was never in the red, and that was like well over a decade ago, fourteen years ago. It's a long, long time ago. Long, 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 long time. Ago. No, 50, it was a long time ago. But the whole point is, I had access to transactions. Didn't have a business card. Didn't have a, the reason I got the LLC, I had to get the LLC and the business license to get the business checking account to be paid by the businesses. That was the only reason I did that. I had to do it. So, understand. When you are told that you must do X, Y, and the, to the Z, to the B, to the C for your business, I'm telling you, no, it's not. No. Uh, the storage auction business, 1300 bucks was the initial investment, which was generated from items laying around the house that really had no money in. So that business actually was started for free. Sweat equity, doing the work, setting up for the garage sale, but that business was started for free. So if you're caught up in this I gotta have all of this money and I will say with one of my former businesses the storage auction deal you need some loot I mean that business is special in that regard that you need money to buy units but you can quote to use an antiquated term parlay that first unit into the second one and this goes back to having some type of financial discipline and which is a killer of most people 
because if you can have a job and that job pays your bills right and then you go out with 50 bucks to the storage auction business and you keep good records and then you turn that 50 into 100 and that 100 into 150 before you know it you're at like a thousand two thousand dollars in strict storage auction money because you're able to reinvest that money back in the business because you don't need it to pay your bills and this is another thing with structure and having a plan and doing certain things when you are able to be lean what I call very lean when I wrote my first book I didn't have a lot I didn't have a lot of obligations really nothing no car payment no credit card bills I was extremely lean and mean and ready to fight the publishing industry. And that's another thing that people don't really talk about. You can't live the dream and chase the dream at the same time unless you're just very, very special and very, very talented. And most of us are not that way. Now, let's talk about making mistakes. I learned what I'm telling you essentially the last seven, eight years that it really began to seep in. Because typically, if you make that, and I'm gonna do a trend, a business, a uh, job to business transition course. I'm gonna do that because many people need that. That's a big, big thing for many people. And essentially, when you're making that transition, you're thinking W-2 style. You're thinking 40 hour week, you're thinking, because I'm serious, for years I based uh, what I was making on, I would do like whatever times divided by 160, to, you know, for my hourly rate. And I just, I got away from that maybe seven years ago, five years ago, because as long as you think like a W-2 earn, uh, wage earner, you're going to get those kind of results. You know, when you start thinking of equity and value and, you know, a value proposition, you might work two hours a week and make, you know, a million a year it's just really how you're structured and there was an article that someone shared you know if you're not a member join hustlers university someone shared this article about the rise of million dollar one person businesses i have said on this channel several times you're going to have billion dollar businesses started by a handful of people it's coming and you could be one of those people you know you could be part of the billion dollar click because technology if you are not afraid of it if you are not putting your head in the sand oh lord all of these bad things are gonna happen it's a wonderful wonderful thing you can begin to realize some important goals and leverage the technology to your benefit it is just out there and you know just to answer a few questions because I started answering some personal questions in some of these videos uh, there are many people that want the storage auction stories and the eBay stories and all this stuff. I haven't sold on eBay since directly since freaking 2006. I, I just so you know, and storage auctions. I haven't bought a unit since 2000, late 2008, early 2009. I have stories that I haven't told, but the problem is once I start that again, then it it, it starts with the eBay thing because most of the videos on this channel are you know they were we're, we're starting to move it's starting to shift and i figured it'll take another two years but we're starting to shift because i'm not really going back to the resale model unless i create a product something of my own intellectual conception that i can put on ebay and amazon at that point i would put it on there because the profit structure is so different I'll give you an example some I learned when I used to sell furniture when I went to buy my furniture at wholesale cost I'll just say a, a nice bedroom set a really snazzy one was about six fifty to eight hundred dollars and that's two bedroom that's two nightstands the chest the dresser the mirror and the bed frame that's really snazzy if you notice if you buy a storage unit that you frequently only get one nightstand because a lot of folks don't get that other nightstand or the chest typical bedroom set of a storage unit is the bed and a dresser in a mirror, maybe one nightstand. So, 650, 850 bucks. Now, if I bought that same bedroom set by the container, that same bedroom set goes down to 300, you know, two some to 300 dollars. Same set, same wood from the same place. Now, why is that? Because I am becoming 
I'm make I'm I'm the the economies of scale kick in for me. So I get this whole unit full of the same bedroom set that if I bought one at a time would be six fifty to eight fifty for two hundred to three hundred bucks. And it's just this is what happens when you become a manufacturer or you get a bulk buy. You get those economies of scale. So by creating my own product, I would be able to just, you know, say the product cost me $20 to make, but I can conceivably sell it on the marketplace for $150. At that point, eBay becomes viable for me. Amazon becomes viable because Amazon's like it says 25 bucks to make, sell it for $150. Amazon's gonna get what is it, 30%? They're gonna get 50, yeah, they're gonna get 50 bucks. So that's $75 between the cost of the item and Amazon's cut. So that's a net profit of $75, which is still pretty good. It's still, that's a keystone for old school retail folks. That's a keystone deal. And that is getting very hard because it used to be able, you could sell a product and you could triple the price or sometimes you could sell it times four. It's getting very difficult because information asymmetry doesn't exist the way that it once did. Everybody knows the cost of everything now, to some degree. There's still some things that are still hidden in esoteric markets. But by becoming a manufacturer and controlling the cost, you can sell for so much more and realize a healthier profit margin. And to me, that just seems the best way to go in the future. Because I've looked at some products you know, physical products I'm talking because I create digital products and intellectual property products. And that's one of the beautiful things about being a creator is you can set markets up or take advantage of marketplaces. We have marketplaces right now are still highly, highly inefficient, extremely inefficient because that's why you can go to Toys R Us or Target and um, buy something then put it on Amazon and realize a profit because the marketplaces are inefficient. And when the marketplaces become more efficient in the time, they will, that's gonna disappear. However, if you are creating your own product, you know, part of your business structure, then you can still take advantage of that and make a lot of money. And as we know, making a lot of money is not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful way to be in the world. Hold on, I gotta do something crazy because these people are driving like maniacs. All right, here we go. So that's the deal. And that's a little bit about me. All right, so with that, if you like the content of the video or if you have a particular business question, go ahead, hit one of these little dots up here. I'm gonna have it somewhere around here where you can uh, request a video or if you like the content of the channel, Please donate. We appreciate it in the G-verse. And with that, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. I'm just letting you know I am doing something new. Hustle University YouTube channel is now a viewer-supported deal. Essentially, 9 out of 10 people benefit from the information of this channel. That's a wonderful thing. Support this channel like a boss. Great advice for you to grow to build. Donate today. You can donate a dollar, five bucks, up to $500. Just hit that little eye or tap that to donate and you'll be golden. Once again, this is something new that I'm doing. I'm going to work up, see how it works out from now to the end of the year. And if it goes well, I'll continue to do so. All right, this is Glendon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the good side.